So let's create an availability group here. We have two kinds, basic and always on. Basic is for SQL 2016 standard. It is the new version of database mirroring. It's meant to replace database mirroring. Always on is for SQL 2016 enterprise. An availability group looks like this. You have two servers. They each have their own database and log. And you can see that is a distinct difference from the old failover cluster. They're not sharing databases. Instead, they're synchronizing. That's where the mirroring part comes in. However, they are doing it based on Windows Server failover cluster technology. It's just that, it's just that they're not sharing data. So you have two of these guys kind of in a failover cluster, but with their own separate data. So when, and, and these databases will be synchronizing constantly. If the primary goes off, the secondary can take over, but not by taking over the shared data, just taking over its regular own local data. The basic availability group is for SQL 2016 Standard Edition. It's meant to replace the deprecated database mirroring feature. It's a failover for a single database, not a whole server. You have only two replicas. The word replica, don't think of replica as secondary. Think of replica as uh, a copy. But then again, don't think of it as like the, the secondary one. Replica means primary or secondary. It's the one with a copy of the database. So you'll have a primary and a secondary. They're both called replicas. The data is initially synchronized by restoring the database and log backup on the secondary. The only bummer is that you can't read the secondary. It's always in a um, no recovery mode. But you can choose how you want to commit the backups. You can choose to be synchronous commit or asynchronous commit. And it's important to know the difference here. Synchronous commit means when replication goes from the primary to the secondary, the primary waits to receive an acknowledgment from the secondary before actually committing the transaction. So what that means is, on the primary, I had a transaction. I am going to replicate it to the secondary using mirroring. I wait until the secondary acknowledges what it calls harden the log, meaning it's not just in memory. It actually wrote to the log file, its own log file. When it sends me an acknowledge that it's hardened the log, then I commit. In this way, the primary knows for a fact that both replicas have the same data and they have consistent data. The downside is we're trading performance for consistency. That waiting to commit part will actually take a little bit longer for the, um, the performance for the primary. So if you want to have guaranteed consistency, you make it synchronous commit. But the primary will have a little bit of a performance hit while it's waiting. Obviously, don't do synchronous commit across bad WAN, WAN links. If you choose asynchronous commit, the primary does not wait for acknowledgment from the secondary to commit the transaction. It assumes the secondary will be fine. And this part is good for slower network links or network links that have bad performance. The only problem that's in my mind about basic availability groups, unfortunately, you cannot just simply upgrade. So let's say I just want to upgrade from standard to enterprise edition. The availability group will not go with it. You have to actually drop it and recreate an always on availability group. So let's talk about always on availability groups. This is a combination of clustering and mirroring. You need to have clustering installed and configured first. You can't even check the checkbox to permit a database to be always on until a failover cluster feature is installed. That checkbox will be grayed out. And what happens is 
it uses the failover clustering capabilities to know when to fail over one to the other. But the failover, interestingly enough, is done at the database level, not at the server level. When you're setting up your always-on availability groups, you need to make sure that all the replicas, whether they're primary or secondary, are in full recovery model. All the databases, you can't have them in simple, you can't have them in bulk logged. And this is because it can't tolerate delays. Unfortunately, because of the synchronous nature, online transaction processing, high transaction workloads, they're going to suffer in their performance because they're waiting for acknowledgments. Availability groups are great when you can't have shared storage because remember what I said, every replica has its own copy of the database. And this is great. I've got two different data centers. And of course, you can't have shared storage between two totally different locations. So we could have always on availability groups between data centers. It's really great for offloading reporting because the secondaries can be readable and used for reporting. And you can have more than three data centers. You can have up to eight replicas if you want. See, back in C uh, SQL 2012, you could have four secondary replicas with one failover partner. SQL 2014 doubled that. With SQL 2016, we can still have eight replicas, but three of them can be synchronous, and two of them can be failover candidates. So you can have replica copies, but not all of them, not any single one of them is permitted to take over in case the primary dies. But in 2016, you can have multiple failover partners here. You can have two failover partners, not just one. You can also have updatable column store indexes and load balance between the read-only secondary. So that's really cool. Let's say that you are um, always on with a couple of secondaries, and those secondaries are for reading and querying. You can load balance between those two. So that's a really good feature. So for your updatable always on availability secondary nodes, the secondaries are simultaneously readable and updatable by using snapshot isolation. The snapshot isolation uses row versioning, meaning it, the versions of the rows, which in turn uses tempdb, so it makes copies. And so with that in mind, put tempdb on fast local storage and have one tempdb file per CPU core. So if you have eight cores, have eight tempdb files, one per core. And just like I said before, all replicas must be in database full recovery mode. And for heaven's sakes, don't truncate the log. No auto log truncating. So now let's talk about the commit modes. Remember how I said SQL 2016 can have three synchronous replicas. The others have to be asynchronous. So asynchronous commit, as I said before, is when the primary replica does not wait for an acknowledgment from the secondary before committing the transaction. It's good between data centers, especially when you're going across a, a network link. It minimizes transaction latency because I'm not waiting. Of course, the downside is that I'm assuming that the secondary got the data OK, and I'm just proceeding ahead. So potentially, there could be some data loss if there's a problem. It allows the secondaries to lag behind the primary database. It is possible to lose some data, and failover has to be manual. In fact, when we do asynchronous commit failover, we call it forced failover, because the admin has to actually say, OK, I am now manually making you the primary. And if I've lost some data, oh well. Now with synchronous commit, and remember, SQL 2016 can have three synchronous partners out of eight. The other five have to be asynchronous. Again, this is where the primary waits for the secondary or secondaries to acknowledge that they have finished hardening the log. In other words, copying transactions out of RAM and putting them into disk. It ensures that once the given secondary is synchronized with the primary, the committed transactions are fully protected. The cost, of course, is transaction latency. In the failover, you can choose for it to be automatic or manual. Now, let me explain what that means. Automatic failover is like it sounds. 
the primary died, the secondary detects that, boom, it takes over. It's now the primary. Manual is not what, like the forced manual failover of the asynchronous. Instead, it's an administrator saying, you know what, I'm going to take the primary down for a while. Now, both the primary and the secondaries have to be up, and the administrator will go in to the always on um, console, and it'll say, and they'll, they'll say, fail over to something else. So it's not like the primary died. The administrator is going to take it down and decides manually to fail it over. If you have asynchronous commit, you can't do this. If you have synchronous commit, you can. So your synchronous commit failover can be automatic or manual. You can do the backups and do the DBCC consistency checks on the offloaded secondary. The secondary can also do your log backups if you want and can do copy only backups of a full database or a file or a file group. Here are the high level steps for creating an always on availability group. You launch the failover cluster manager. You configure server one and server two as servers in the cluster. You give it some name like cluster one or whatever. You then enable the SQL 2016 always on availability group feature. You create an always on availability group and you select the database or databases for the group. You add and configure the replica and you create what's called an availability group listener. Give it whatever name you like. Now, the listener is actually a combination of an IP address and a network name, the DNS name. And you tell it to listen on the good old SQL uh, port 1433. You select the full data synchronization method and specify the network path. In T-SQL, if you want, you could say create avail availability group, give it some name with whatever options you like for a particular database. Replica on, you have to list the replica. Availability group on, and then you list uh, information about the availability group. And then the listener DNS name, you have to put in the listener information. So you can do availability groups, T-SQL, the wizard is the easiest. You frankly can do it in PowerShell too if you want. If you want to add a replica, here's how we could do it in T-SQL. Alter availability group, whatever its name is, modify replica on, and then you specify whatever instance, like this is the sixth one, with availability mode, and then choose synchronous commit or asynchronous commit. And then Alter availability group, whatever its name is, modify replica on whatever instance number, like number six, with failover mode, automatic or manual. Remember, if you choose asynchronous commit, then there's no point in doing this failover mode here because it's going to be forced manual anyway. Now, of course, you'll need to get the secondary going. It needs to come up to speed, and you have two ways of doing it. You could do a backup and restore of the database and the log, or if you really want, if the database isn't that big, you could pick an option called direct seeding. Direct seeding is basically, I'm not going to do a backup and restore. I'm just going to tell it, just start copying from the very beginning. If the database isn't that big and your network is high speed, you could get away with direct seeding, but of course it's not as efficient. And you should only use it for special cases where backup and restore isn't a good choice.